In 2009, I um, and a couple of my managers became very interested in chronic disease, which is in some respects very similar to palliative care, um, just simply because we saw the demographic changing in the home care population we were serving. So we became very interested in chronic disease management. We were noticing that a lot of these patients that we served, we had the same names. I'd see my spreadsheets and I didn't see the patients, but I would see the same names all of the time. About the same time, we started becoming interested in some of the facets of chronic disease management. And we were very interested in a model that was presented in Little Rock, Arkansas by Baptist South. Uh, they had a, a home-based chronic care model that was based on Wagner's model. So we kind of adopted a lot of those tenants in the way we cared for patients. About the same time, hospitals were starting to sit up and take notice of home care because of the emerging regulations with regard to readmission penalties. And when it first started, this was we became interested in chronic care probably around 2009. 2011 and 2012 is when they really started to take notice and home care started to be a really popular kid on the block, so to speak, because they saw us as a potential solution to the readmission issue. So we were able to start putting some of our philosophy forward in the organization as perhaps a possible solution. One of the things that we pitched to the organization was the home kind of the really the home-based model that the folks in Little Rock, Arkansas were doing. And we pitched it a couple times and it, it really didn't get adopted right away. In however, in 2012, the end of 2012, we presented a variation on that model to our senior administration, asking if we could just do a pilot program and asking if we could just start perhaps with heart failure because we noticed that some of these patients we were caring for with heart failure, as soon as the Medicare benefit ran out, which anybody who's familiar with home care knows that once a patient becomes stable, once they maybe are not quite so homebound, Medicare wants you to discharge them. They consider them no longer eligible for Medicare reimbursed services. So we would discharge those patients and then we were noticing probably within maybe a couple weeks, maybe a little longer, they were right back in the hospital and we were getting another referral on them. So we said, what if we were to have a model of care where we didn't worry about Medicare? We don't worry about Medicare payment. We discharge them from our Medicare agency and we admit them to our pilot program. And in this pilot program, we'll send a nurse out we didn't want to get real fancy. I mean, we didn't say, oh, we'll send therapy, we'll send aids, we'll furnish supplies. No, none of that, just simply nursing. And so we pitched that if we were to send that nurse out periodically, could we maybe keep that patient out of the hospital? That was approved. And so we would, of course, we were really careful how we did this. We had them sign a separate consent. We were very careful to admit patients to our program. It was very much pre-approved by the physician. Um, we had to have certain criteria were in place. We wanted patients who wanted to stay out of the hospital. They had to have that desire. We had to, have, we had to know that the physician would be willing to work with us. And we had to make sure that really we could take care of their care needs in the home. I mean, we still had to adhere to the requirements of a licensed home care agency. And so we did that and on that basis. So we started to get referrals. Actually, we got the referrals from our own program because we knew they had already selected us as the agency of choice. We asked them then, when they, once they were stable, when we thought they were chronically ill enough that perhaps they could benefit, we asked them if they wanted to try being on this program. And we didn't have a lot of patients that first year in 2013. I think we had five or six patients. And uh, those were the ones that we saw pretty much, I think we admitted most of them in the first couple months of the year. And we followed them throughout the year 2013. And we, we did have a great deal of success with those patients. One could call what we're doing palliative care in some respects. I think there's a lot of other tools and that there's probably a, a much more strict definition of palliative care that somebody would take exception to me calling chronic disease palliative care, but I do believe when we look at the patients that we're caring for, we're doing palliative care. We're treating them, the, their goals of care are not curative in nature. 
but it's symptom control and it's management and it's trying to stay at home and you know trying to to stay symptom free as much as they can to me that's palliative care as you look at a home-based model for chronic disease management or chronic care of a patient or palliative care if you will i think that there's probably some things that you could do a little bit differently than what we're doing and as we expand our program I'm hoping to add some of those components I certainly I know that we have worked very closely especially in the management of our heart failure patients with um, the uh, some specialties I mean in the in the Wagner model and in the the Baptist South model of chronic care that I'm so kind of in love with they had specialty oversight so there's they certainly had a, a a crew of advanced practice nurses that had different specialties that they worked with. I like that and we don't necessarily have that in all respects but we do have some specialists. For example, um, our heart failure clinic nurse is an, an APN. She works very closely with our nurses in the, with the heart failure patients. Uh, we, we do have another nurse who works a lot with cancer patients that's in our organization in APN. I envision as we go down the road that we'll maybe want to include her in our team much more robustly than we do now. Um, the heart failure clinic nurse will make home visits when necessary. We need to expand that. And so if, if I were going to have anything that I wanted, I would have those APNs working directly for home care and I would have them reporting under the same structure. We're measuring the success by looking at our 30-day readmissions and the number of hospitalizations that these patients have had. Um, I can tell you, I'm going to say maybe four out of the five had maybe one hospitalization in the past year. Several of our patients have been out over a year now. So that's a good measurement. And I would say previous, one of our patients had 12 admissions in 2012 and has not had any since 2012. So in 2009, myself and some of my uh, other managers here at Riverside Home Health Care went to um, chronic care training through Baptist South, um, the Beth Hennessy chronic care model. Um, and then we brought that information back and we trained our staff, our home care staff. And um, in that model of care and through the training, we had training on um, motivational interviewing, um, disease specific states as far as CHF, COPD, and um, diabetes as well, um, health coaching, um, principles of self-care management, health literacy. So we brought that education back to the staff and gave them that extensive training. Are you taking your pills? Oh, yeah. I walk, but... It's not far. I, I don't like going outside when it's so. I know, I know. And actually, considering with the way allergies are, you're doing pretty good. Your lungs sound pretty good, Betty. Oh, good. Uh-huh. When was the last time you were in the hospital? January of 2013. Last, that's right. It's been a, a, over a year and a half. A year and almost eight months. And I'm so happy. I know. But I couldn't do it without Lisa. <laughs> She's not me. It I is keep too. telling her it's not me. It's him. And it's Dr. Chetrass' office, and you're you doing what you're supposed it? to. Yeah, okay. Betty used to um, get mad and not want to eat what she was supposed to eat. You are not right. take your medicine. Am I right? Up there. And then she learned. The young one. She had to He's do all that stuff in order to stay out of the hospital. Oh. And then as far as that other sugar pill goes, you need to discuss that with Carrie when you see her. Yeah. Because you should have enough to get you through till the next visit. Because yeah. we, he picked up that new prescription. Uh -huh. So you've got enough until you, he comes back. And, and then, because she comes back the 15th, that's my point. Correct. Yeah. So make sure you follow up and make that appointment. Got it? Got it. All right. Getting the patient activated. You want to have patient activation, so it's it's doing things with the patient and not doing things to the patient. So um, 
our mission is not to be so task oriented, but again, to activate the patient and become involved. Find out what they want to do. Start small and start to change those behaviors step by step. Now at the end of 2014, I'm getting ready to uh, report to senior administration again. And this time I'm going to ask for something quite different and broader. I'm going to ask to take this completely out of the pilot program and actually structure a separate entity to take care of these patients. This chronic care home-based model, um, I think you have to stick to it. You have to have the passion for it. And, you know, we, I, I think we started, like I say, in 2008 or 2009, pitching this proposal to senior administration, and I pitched it everywhere. I, I, it was basically convincing senior administration. At the point that it really kind of started to resonate was it when it, they really saw how it could be to their benefit in solving some of the problems within the organization. That made it, uh, they were able to be persuaded when that happened. So that's what I would advise. Show them the value of home care in solving their problems.